Hello, my name is Monica Dara and I work as a principal teacher of chemistry in a local comprehensive school. Like a lot of my colleagues, I recently became aware that the Glasgow Development Agency is planning a major new project, one which will be of importance to everyone in Scotland and beyond, right here in the heart of Glasgow. This project is called Excite, a new state-of-the-art science centre, which will be the centrepiece of a proposed network of such facilities throughout the country. Now, not only as a teacher, but as a scientist and the mother of two small children, obviously I want to find out more about it. And there are three questions I want to ask. One. What exactly is Excite? Two, what benefits will it bring to Scotland? And three, what makes it different from the other science centres we are already familiar with? To answer these questions, I'm off to talk to one of the main people involved. Excite is positioned on the old Princess Dock, on this promontory running out into the Clyde. It has three basic elements, the tower, the IMAX theatre and the Exploratorium. At 100 metres high, the Millennium Tower is the landmark of the site. A remarkable piece of engineering, it actually turns into the wind. The story we are telling in the tower is that of communication. What will happen is that people will take a car which tours the exhibition before taking a lift to the top of the tower. On reaching the top, there will be a series of interactive devices exploring Scotland's position in the science of communication and providing amazing views across the city. The IMAX theatre will both support the science centre and be an attraction in its own right. It will show 2D and 3D films to an audience of up to 350, exploring all aspects of the scientific and natural world. The clarity that the 60-foot square image provides on the screen is absolutely sensational. The Exploratorium is the heart of Excite and holds the main exhibition areas. It stands like the hull of an ocean liner, entirely glazed on its north side to reveal the activities within. As you can see, it's a four-storey building with the main entrance off the new square. To visit the exhibition area, you take the main escalator to the first floor. And this is where Excite really begins to differ from traditional science centres. Whilst it uses familiar interactive techniques and equipment, its approach to interpretation is different in two crucial ways. First, the theme is not really science, but human creativity. What is it? Why is it important? And how can we all engage in it? Secondly, rather than being phenomenon-based, Excite is essentially issues-based. It doesn't just explain how things work, but it goes on to ask, what are the issues facing us in the next century? How will they affect our lives? And what are the opportunities for us to do something about them? The centre has four main exhibition galleries, which deal with the four key challenges facing society as we enter the new millennium. Keeping My Fires Burning deals with energy, Using My Body explores the world of health, medicine and food. Wherein the world addresses the environment. And finally, Being in Touch links with the tower to address the economic, social and cultural issues raised by modern communications. Now bear in mind that Excite will not open until Easter 2000 and it's important that when it does, it is both topical and relevant. To do this, the appointed director and support team will, over the next 18 months, engage with the education, science and business communities in a detailed design process. However, we have already devised a basic schematic framework for the galleries. Let me show you an example. The Where in the World gallery, located on the first floor, is split into three main zones. The central feature is a slowly rotating globe with interactive monitors, 
allowing visitors to select places for study and to explore special features important to understanding the Earth. This area is given over to the ocean. It uses a simulated seabed exhibition as a miniature laboratory to investigate the relationships between the seas and our everyday lives. In each zone, there are interactive learning areas set aside to allow visitors to follow up any topic of particular interest. Here we see the same approach applied to the Using My Body exhibition on the second floor. Here zones dealing with various aspects of the body are grouped around a central display exploring the brain, the way it works, and how famous Scottish scientists and engineers have solved problems through the application of creative thought. Now before you leave, I do want to make three final points. First, Excite will not be simply a do-it-yourself exhibition. It will also offer a varied program of demonstrations and lectures by a team of in-house interpreters. Second, Excite will not be static, but will employ constantly changing exhibits. Who knows what will be topical in the year 2000? But if Excite were to open tomorrow, perhaps it will be exploring the whole issue of BSE and its possible links to CJD in man. We look at the nature and history of the problem and the work which is being done to address it. And third, remember that Excite is the hub of an integrated Scottish network of science centres. Each will share exhibits and activities and make its own specific contributions to the national programme. Now speaking as a parent, I am convinced that youngsters will find this a truly exciting experience and surveys carried out amongst my fellow teachers have revealed overwhelming support. But Excite, as we've seen, is much more than a resource for formal education. If it's going to be successful, it is essential that it has the backing of the whole community, from science, from the tourism industry, from business and commerce, and of course, from the man in the street. So what do they think about it? We have a wonderful heritage in Scotland based in science, technology and engineering. Indeed, the Scots engineer was a, a legend right across the world at the beginning of the century. And at the same time, Clyde built was well built. It was the hallmark of excellence. And because of that, the GDP per head in Scotland at the beginning of the century was the highest in the world. But unfortunately, that's now faded. And in fact, when we look at skill comparisons with other countries, we don't compare well. What we have to do is to create a centre of excellence a beacon or an icon that they can relate to that will bring to them the very best in the world. And I believe that the network of Scottish Science Centres and particularly the proposals for Pacific Key can be one of the means of bringing that together. Science is fun and, and we want to get that message across but it's not only fun, some of it's hard work. Whereas the classroom is, uh, there is some fun and excitement there too but the intention is to achieve a set of uh, targets where kids learn things. It's to connect the relatively dry classroom to with uh, the real world and the fact that everybody can enjoy it and do it. The gulf between the uh, scientific and technological uh, leading edge and the public at large is, is so huge. It's very important that um, there is somewhere that the public at large can interact with science and technology out with the formal education system. We're moving into an era of lifelong learning and people need the opportunities to engage and to re-engage in scientific discovery. It's okay, we can do this uh, remotely via television and magazines, but there's nothing like getting the hands-on and brains-on experience of a science discovery centre. In 1990, um, I set up and opened the Glasgow Dome Discovery on the former Garden Festival site, the, the site that we're now looking at for the new science centre. And five years on from the closing of the exhibition, we're still getting inquiries asking, you know, is it going to come back again? Can we have more of this? So I'm confident that that style of exhibition will work very well in Glasgow. Everyone will see different benefits from the development, but if I could speak uh, for myself as chairman of Scottish Enterprise, why are we supporting it? The first answer to that is that uh, we want Scotland to be a modern, society and economy, a high value added economy. If you want to do that in the next century, then you need to be in the forefront and actually applying science and technology to produce modern products, modern services. So it's firstly, if you like, about economic um, development. Um, 
secondly, I think it's uh, in uh, an old Scottish tradition that education should reach out to as many people as possible. Um, and if you like, that's the idea behind the, the National Centre. We can actually reach five million people. We're not just reaching a small segment of the population. Thirdly, it's a major visitor attraction in its own right. I mean, this is meant to make science and technology not a dull and boring subject, but something which is exciting and people actually enjoy, and that's actually how you get people interested at the end of the day. Fourthly, it's about urban and environmental improvement, because particularly in the Glasgow site, this is taking a site, which is really a central site, and actually transforming it. Now I've seen exactly what could exist here at Pacific Key come the new millennium. And the more I've learned, the more the idea of a Scottish National Science Centre has fired my imagination. You could say, I've seen the future, and it looks fantastic. All of the people we've listened to, and of course, the people in the community, passionately believe that this project will make Scotland the envy of the world in the coming millennium. We hope you agree and help make the dream a reality. <laughs>